All right, good morning. Hi, Tony. Good morning. Hello, come on guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Here we go. <laughs> Just quickly that I can get your name and what you do. My name is Tony DeVale. I have a company called Life Masters. As you can see, I'm an old buddy. I've been doing this work for more than 45 years. <laughs> I've spent at least 45 years and over 10 million rand to develop my process, my systems. My background is I'm a healer. I do deep dive healing, personal transformation, and serious, hardcore, that's where I can go. And full contact boxing, have you seen the, the full contact cage fighting? I've been able to go there. I don't go there by choice. But if I have to in, in the work that I do, so I do the heavy duty lifting stuff. So I've taken that work and I bring it into the corporate space. We call it team building. I've developed a framework that I bring it in. We have a lifeline counselor, a hospice counselor, NLP therapist, hypnotherapist. The tools are out there. I've done it other than so. <laughs> so I'm, I'm here for the light. I work for Source. I, my mission is I co-create a world of more, more integrity, freedom, Meaning, love, abundance, peace, and joy, because that's what I think the world needs. What I'm going to share with you today is some of my experience and perspectives. Please feel free to ask questions. I'm assuming we can dive as deep as I want to go. Are we okay with that? Are we, are we good that I can bend your fuse a little? Yes. Are you okay with that? Please. We know the revolution is here. I'm a techie. I was in the days of computers, PCs, IBM. I'm a computer programmer, COBOL, RPG, mainframe. Mm -hmm. So I'm a serious techie. But I got tired of being behind a cold machine. Money and machines are cold lovers. Mm. I prefer hacking human software. <laughs> That's what I do. I, the quickest description for you is I'm a soul surgeon. And I'm a corporate soul surgeon. I go where angels fit to tread. I get told you can't use the word love in the workplace. Mm. In a, in a, I did a, a large accounting firm. And in the pre-event assessment and the, the briefing, the woman said you can't use that word. You lose all the respect of my directors. So I, I interviewed everyone. In. 25 or 28 of them before the event and I started my workshop and I said good morning I'm probably in front of the most intelligent group for a long time and you see them all like this on an IQ basis and I said but on, on another basis you're probably the most stupid <laughs> I said on an emotional intelligence basis you guys do not even get onto the scale and then I'm like I had their attention at the very very end the big boss this chairman of the group came and said you know what you're right we've lost our soul but you need somebody, and that's what I was thinking earlier, the world isn't going to change because we want it to change. Business is driven by money. Done. Oh, How do you give a heart to a machine, to the tin can? You can't. So it's, it's incumbent upon us, from the ground up, to bring heart into the machine. Because the guys at the top, they're rewarded by numbers, they only look at numbers, the higher you go, the less empathy you have. And that's my value in my process, is bringing the heart and the empathy back. But you're wrestling with tigers. These guys, men don't want to go to therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists. I'm not broken. And, I, and I, even if I am, I don't want you to say I'm broken, because my ego is too fragile. That's why I coach. A high-performance coach is a lot more accessible and amenable to me than saying you're broken, go to a therapist. So understand, men's egos is the most fragile thing on the planet you're going to find. I have a thing called consciously constructive. Somewhere in the world, there's a few people, about five, four or five companies, do, they do a process called the Deliberately Developmental. One of them is called Next Jump. You can go and have a look at them. Their process is half a day staff development, half day commercial focus. We're never going to get to that in our country in the next hundred years. Mm -hmm. I'm saying 45 minutes every day development is a better process. Nibble knowledge. The human brain can't do more than 20 or 30 minutes. When I had my computer business, if you work with me in my company, every day we were in training, the very first thing in the morning, 7 30 or so quarter to 8 till 8.45, you did growth every day. And not just on business stuff. I used to make them stand up and do sp public speaking and negotiation. And if you're a smoker, I got you to speak on why smoking is bad for you. And then my secretary came about 25 years ago. She came and said to me, I want to introduce you to my husband. She said, the most valuable thing you taught me was to be able to be a confident public speaker. She said, that has taken me to places I never would have got. Thank you. And that's my goal. Is my goal is to stretch potential. And we'll play there no not. So my, my system is consciously constructive. Minimum an hour a week, ideally 45 minutes every day, grow some way. Mm. I personally do probably 
120 gigs a month on my fiber, of which at least 60 of those is videos, meditation, NLP, hypnotherapy, anything that's growing me to be bigger, better, stronger, more love, more care, more compassion. My framework is we need to be future fit today. The world's coming at us at an incredible speed. The problem is we've got weak, fragile people. We've built a machine, we've built an environment. The lady before was talking about resilience. I worked with Professor Stoltz in the States who created the AQ resilience movement. Is the future getting easier or more challenging? What do you think? More challenging. More challenging. I don't see it getting easier in any way or form. Mm -hmm. Competition is growing. Mm -hmm. Margins are getting smaller. Mm -hmm. Doing more with less. And technology is taking over jobs. Those that are in a position of having a J-O-B, which is just over broke. <laughs> no, no, think about it. Business as a machine uh, is broken. Mm -hmm. Because it's driven by shareholders mm -hmm. who are all wealthy greeders, what I call greeders. They're there for the money. Any shareholder, any major organization, they can't spend that money in their lifetime. But they want more. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what the cost is on the people, mm -hmm. the heart, the soul, the family, the heart attacks, the stress, they don't care. Number two is, do you know how many people in Africa right now, vaguely? Mm -hmm. About a billion. Population growth right now, by 2055, it will be two billion. Not equally spread around, it will be where food, clothing, shelter, water and jobs are. So consider our environment with four times more population. With no leadership, no integrity, no resources, no water. We are in a very fragile space. There's a tsunami coming at us, we just don't see it. Tech is changing everything. I love it, <coughs> but I'm nervous about it. Because if you cannot move, if you cannot think, if you cannot be agile enough to be in the top 5 to 10%, dog food's your future. <laughs> I was a Boy Scout uh, when I was younger. I used to take food to the ladies when Hillbrow was a white old age village. And we used to take them cans, we used to collect food and take them cans of food. And the old ladies were there, half a can of cat food for breakfast, half a can of cat food for dinner. That was 50 years ago. It's even harder today. Less than 10% of people, and I think I've got the graph there. But think about the technology that's coming, the guys that are running the machine. They're driven by the numbers. Can I say, if I'm going to have trouble with staff, with CCMA, and all of those things, just get a machine that works 24-7. <laughs> that one machine can do the job of 10 people. In a day, it can do more than 100 days of learning. So machine learning is going to replace humans in, in law, in medical, in financial. Just in legal alone, for at least 40% of the jobs are going to go. The people haven't seen. The machine is getting faster, and every time it gets faster, it gets even faster. The machine can learn in one day. They've got a, a robotic hand to take something like this, and to be able to do this, not easy to do. I watched them, the guy has programmed it. You say, show me the red, it shows you the red. Show me the green, show me the green. One hand, robotic, ready at that level of dexterity. It's coming. And so, look at Tesla's factory. Machines drive 90% of what's happening. No one cares about making a job for people. They have to be financially sane, that's the oxygen. If you've got no oxygen, tough, you die. So there has to be a financial imperative. But you've got to put a soul into the machine to say, we're making money, now let's create a great place for people. And we at the bottom are going to be the ones that have to do that. So the tsunami's coming. You know, I'm a jet ski fisherman, I get deep sea, I catch four meter sharks on a three meter jet ski. And I often run the movie, because I nearly died, my, my jet ski got filled with water about two months ago. You can see stuff coming. But we like boiled frogs. You know the boiled frogs? Mm -hmm. We like boiled frogs, we're hoping. Hoping it's not coming. I'm telling you it's coming. It's coming, it's coming. Finish. Foundation of everything, all the stories I was listening to, the absolute foundation, also from Professor Stoltz, is mindset. I don't care what skill set you got. Good skills, bad attitude, trouble. Good skills, low self-worth, low self-esteem, low self-confidence, problem. Good skill set, conflict, angry, hate, betray, depression, problem. And I understand from the psychological point of view, there's chemical depression. Your brain is huge power. Most of what I see as depression in my workplaces, in my team building and leadership development, is anger without enthusiasm. Think about that. 
anger without enthusiasm. I want to play with you. Because you, if you can get this in your workplace, take all the emotions, all the positive emotions. Glad, joy, peace, love. So we've got glad. We go down to mad or angry, twitchy, bitchy. We go down to sad. Sad, sorry, I don't write much. Really bad depression and shame. Shame is one of the lowest things. Look at look up Professor uh, Dr. Hawkins, mm -hmm. Power versus Force, the scale of human consciousness. Shame is one of the biggest smashers. Imagine having this beautiful high-tech machine and you go to the hammer and you smash it. When you shame somebody, that's what you are doing to the soul. Ever, ever had children ever said to a child, shame on you? You should be ashamed of yourself. Mm -hmm. Manipulate and we beat people with shame. And that's why men explode, because the shame is such a painful mm -hmm. thing. The pain is so big, it's like a, t a tiger or a lion with a toothache. They'll do stuff that's unbelievable. But here's the absolute secret of love. Pretend you're glad, imagine you're glad, you're happy, you're peace, you're joyous, you've got everything. What takes away your gladness? Down to mad, anger, twitchy, bitchy. If you know what that thing is that takes away your gladness, you are free. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks. If you know what takes away your gladness and you can mitigate that, you are absolutely free. So what takes away your gladness? Because if you have this, you know what to do for your staff. Do you spend money on insurance? Why? What does it give you? Safety. So what are you really, really, what is insurance really protecting you from? One word, it starts with L. Like real loss, fear of loss, perception of loss. That's why, that's what keeps people awake at night, that's why you spend money on, that's what drives the machine. Fear is three times bigger driver than positivity. The brain, your amygdala, is programmed three times more. Look at the Lasada process, all of the new neuropersuasion technologies, all of the new neuroscanning. Fear is a three times more powerful driver. It takes three positives to neutralize one negative. Professor Lasada's work. If you can understand how loss is real loss, you lose somebody, they die, you lose a wife, you get a check, whatever. Fear of loss is why you spend your money on insurance. And perception of loss, you take away significance, take away certainty, take them from their corner office or whatever it is. The brain goes into animalistic reptilian, pretend, protect, defend, mm -hmm. survive mode. We do this all of the time to people. I was looking at some research and I saw this number. Work out what's, what's your salary goal for your, for your staff complement for the year. 10 to 12 percent of that is being lost on lost productivity through conflict. External conflict alone. What about the internal personal conflict? We all have huge potential. On the scale of to 0 100, Write on your piece of paper, how much of your potential do you use each day? Conject, ex explore. On a scale of 0 to 100, 0 no, not using it, to 100 using my full potential, how much of your potential do you think you use each day? I like it, honestly. What do you think? Alright, so uh, the sound's not going to be too big, but please everybody stand up, put down your pens, and let's have a dance. <laughs> Sorry about the sound. Sorry about the volume, because it's normally like nice, strong volume. Tell them I'll be home soon. <laughs> Sorry about this. So on a scale of 0 to 100, how much of that opportunity to dance Did you dance to your full potential? No, no. I couldn't. You're right, you're right. But why didn't you? I was shy. There we go. There we go. You're afraid of, of, of what other people will think of you if you really go for it. Yes. So it's better to be safe. Yeah. Isn't that where everybody lives? Safe? Yeah. I asked a question in my workshops on a scale of 0 to 100. Imagine you wake up with 100 units of energy every day. You wake up out of bed. Chum, chum. 100 units. How much of that energy do you use for preservation and protection in your workplace? 
Guess what my average is? 70 to 75 percent. Mm -hmm. It's for preservation and protection in the corporate space. Mm -hmm. So all of this research around wellness and well-being is all a lot of hot air. It's like an engagement, all Gallup's research. You now they've been doing research for years on engagement. We're spending billions on engaging staff. Right now, engagement's around about 20 percent. Disengagement's probably, in fact, in South Africa, disengagement's at like 35% in some places. Those are the terrorists. So in the well-being, those are the five main areas through the Gallup process. And 66% of people, they reckon, are okay in one of those dimensions. 7% of the people are okay in all of those dimensions. I think we live in hell. Everybody smiles nicely, be good, be kind, but work is hell. I, when I go and do my team building, do the, we do assessments. Trust is low. One, two, three out of ten. Self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, low. Anger, frustration, conflict, high. Racism, high. Defend mode, brain, defend mode, high. Work is hell for many people. We smile and pretend we're okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not. So, I do research on future. Because for me, what do you bring? You need resources to bring stuff. If you continue your lifestyle that you're doing today, when you're 65, will you be able to retire and live for another 40 years on the money you've got? Mm. What's the oldest person you know alive today? Um. My friend's mother, white lady, died at 101. In my workshops, minimum 95 to 100. They were saying that the girl or the person that's going to live till 200 has already been born. Sure. Yeah. Now, but think about this. Most of us are going to retire, or the, the machine is designed to retire at 65. How are you going to fund from 65 to 100? Serious. Mm -hmm. That tsunami's coming. People live by habit. If you stopped earning today, how long before you run out of money? Tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, but that's, that's, where, that's where most people live. In my coaching, 95% of my people are there. In the workplace, they're even harder. They're in, they're in debt already. Never mind going to run out. They're in debt already. So this is the research from the insurance companies. If you're going to be anywhere near the top, you've got to change what you're doing. You've got to change your business model, what you're doing. You've got to change how we educate people. You've got to bring out that potential. Because you said, I think you said 10% or 20%? You said 14? No, I said 14. Oh. <laughs> what happens if it's only 4 I'm serious. What happens if what you think is your potential that you're using is, is negligible? I believe we've got huge potential. But we're too scared. We're too nervous. What are they going to think of me? I see guys in the workshops when you have a bit louder, like the guys in the back dancing. And there's some guys that go like, uh, you know, they're like nervous, they're shy. And it's a reality of work. You can, there's free stuff. I'll find you anything free on YouTube right now. NLP, hypnotherapy, build self-worth, build self-esteem, self-confidence. Why don't people use it? When you said 29% dead, well, as, a, as a measure of what, by when? By, by 65. By the age of 65, out of 100 people, 49% are going to be living in poverty. Mm -hmm. poverty. 29, in fact, in, in Africa it's high. It's about 35% are dead with AIDS and yeah, 65. Murder. Okay. By the age of 65, insurance yeah. Yeah. statistics. So I, when I was, had my computer business, I went to IBM, I was going to do computer education on Mnet Channel TV at lunchtime. And I was part of an, I had an IBM computer company, and I met with the big guys, and they said, you need to understand, think about this, in 10 years time, 50% of the jobs we're going to be doing in 10 years, we haven't even designed yet. Do you understand that? I didn't at the time. We didn't have webmasters and social media managers and ed. that 10 years is becoming shorter. In 7 to 8 years time, 50% of those jobs haven't even been invented yet. And they are not low skill jobs, they are high mental acuity, mental agility, resilience, soft skills, negotiation, connection, communication, collaboration. We don't know what skills are needed, but we do know what kind of mindset is going to be needed. So what do you build into your machine? Who ran the first four minute mile? Alistair. No. Went close. Alistair. His coach. <laughs> now think about this. His coach believed it was possible. 
and got Roger to believe it was possible against all the external context that says you can't, it's impossible. Medical science, all of the, the professors and the, the experts said, your body cannot do it. But one day, Roger ran four minutes up, four minute mile. But his coach was the very first one to see the possibility and to impart that belief and expand Roger's potential. Do you know that within days and weeks, other people started to do it? Mm -hmm. Today, 17-year-olds run the four-minute mile. The bar for excellence has been raised every day. Africa's problem is we don't have meritocracy. We have because you're a nice guy. We'll never be world-class. We're so far from world-class because we allow weak people in positions where we need strength and power. We allow readers where we need leaders. We do not have a clear line of integrity, capacity, competence, connection, matters for the mass. Think in any organization, when I go into that, already there's a racial issue. People don't say it, I can see the energy. I see it from the research, from my assessments. My goal at the end of that time is I get people that hate each other on Monday, they're hugging best friends by Wednesday. And I do stuff like that. I have people that, have, that I haven't spoken for eight years. They rebuild their relationship. I have guys that, he's, when I start the workshop, he says, keep that X, Y, Z from me. By two days, they're hugging their buddies. And that's, unless you change the identity of who I am and how I show up and connect, I don't care what you do on the outside, you're going to struggle. It'll be a, a, a facade. So we know from the work of Professor Stoltz that the right mindset can make you seven times more valuable in the workplace. Because mm -hmm. what does business need? What is HR's job? Any of your wellness practitioners, what is the core function, duty, responsibility? Is to build up a person, choose the right person, put them in a context, and get them to bring the best value possible. So the company can make money and we can pay them for that. But at the end of the day, it's how much value do they bring. I've seen people with, with PhDs, three, four, five PhDs. But such a, such a bad internal self-identity process, self-esteem, anger, twitchy bitchy. They're living in the past, they're not living in the now. And unless you address the past stuff and the fear of the future stuff, you can never have your power. The only place you have power is right now. So think of, just quickly, quickly, what's one thing that you can do in your workplace that will expand and activate the potential of your people? Make a note, just a word. Something. What's one thing that you can use to ex expand, activate, align, and unleash the potential of your people? Because isn't that your job? Isn't that your function and your responsibility to bring up the best of people? Every day, to create a place where you bring the whole person to work. The work that I do, I do the people stuff, people, teams, leadership, culture. Mm -hmm. Because of the consequence and the impact and the value, this is the kind of financial consequences I've created with the process. So we did a weekend workshop for the first company, two days. Within, they, they grew their business almost 4x, just by doing the people stuff. Mindset, attitude, resilience, relationships, connection, collaboration, trust, leadership, culture. There's huge financial gain in doing the people stuff. The problem is HR for most people is on the table, not at the table. And if you're going to be a good HR partner, you're going to bring this kind of financial impact to the machine. Because at the end of the day, money talks and BS walks. Now, I did stuff, I did work some work for Nissan. The guy said, if it doesn't touch our bottom line, get out of here. That's, that's all that matters for the guys. What's the fishy saying? Think of what, what's, what's in the fish's mind. Mm-hmm. Also, more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's... Mm, bigger, better. What just comes to him? Just say it. I'll ask. Just give me a second. Okay. Abandons. Possibilities. Cool. I thought he stayed. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, free, okay. Freedom. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can always achieve more. Eh? <laughs> Congruence is an issue. <laughs> now, what's interesting is only one was kind of escape, running away from the pain. 
But I'm using this to show you what your mindset is. Because just from that alone, do I come from a fear-based process or do I come from an attractive approach-based process is the fundamental foundation mm -hmm. of all the people. I have people say, what happens if I fall? That's their full-time life. Fear-based, danger-based first. How do you change that person on a permanent, long-term basis? I hope I'm good enough. I hope it's better when I get there. Just this alone, you start to understand. And if you're going to employ people, you need to understand the machine inside it. Mm -hmm. At the core, at the heart, at the soul of the machine. I have a thing called Revolutionary Workplace. If you send me an email or give me a card, I'll send you a download, 500 grand value, hours introduction to the whole system. But essentially, it's people first. Positive people, strong people, good people, healthy, resilient people make great teams. You can't have a good team with weak, bad people, bad relationships, bad mindsets. With teams, leadership matters. Leadership's huge impact. But you need a functional team to be able to have a lead it effectively. And you need real leaders, not greeders. 70% mm -hmm. of people in leader, leadership positions are not leaders. They're there for function, role, position. They don't have the qualities. Mm -hmm. And then the culture matters. The culture in the department, the culture of your family, the culture of your business. Because context controls all behavior. You can have a good person in a bad environment, 6 to 12 weeks, you'll smash them. So how good is your culture? What is your culture? So it's the water you swim in that you're not really aware of. I'm certified internationally for science of happiness, and you need fuel, you need energy. I often see people, you know, they wake up, I used to be a DJ, and I used to work day job, and then I worked a night job. Get home at 3, 4 in the morning, sleep till 6, 7, drive to my day job, Monday to Friday, Saturday, sleep the whole of Sunday, and back in the machine again. But eventually I burnt myself out. And so I used to wake up in the morning, like either good God, it's morning, or good morning God. <laughs> <laughs> How do your people wake up? How do you wake up? That sleep, a sleep will t lack of sleep will take a gorilla down. Mm. You know, people that do this brainwashing and torture, they know it's, it's a resource issue. Energy, sleep, willpower, just take away the sleep. You'll, you'll break anybody. Mm. But that happiness, every hour lo lo uh, loss of sleep, is a 9% loss in happiness level. Happy people be, do, and have more in every dimension. They, are, they bring more value to the organization, but it's seen as a soft, fluffy. But you know, the soft stuff is the hard stuff. And that's why the, the main guys avoid the soft, mushy stuff. I've had guys stand up and say, don't bring the hug stuff to me. But I'm saying, you know, even on the rugby field, the guys are hugging now. So if, if, that, if those men can hug, yeah. what's wrong with you, boys? Now, I, I, we get people to the point of hugging. With Professor Stoltz's work, we came across this thing of learned helplessness and Seligman. Everybody I've been in front of has some kind of learned helplessness, but just the problem's invisible. So the, like the elephant at the circus, could it, could it break away from the chain? Mm. Of course it can. Easy. Why doesn't it? Being taught, you can't. They have the pike fish, they put in a glass tank, divide the glass, put the fish there with its favorite bait, it tries to get to the fish, it smashes its snout a few times, can't, you won't, you're stupid, not good enough. They take the central glass out, do you know that fish will die? Because it will swim around its bait, but it's been taught you can't, so it won't. And it's all invisible. You can't see it, you don't see it when you do the interview, but it shows up in an unsafe environment. Mm. And you don't have a psychologically safe workspace, protection, defense comes in. The number one thing you've got to do for your people is build psychological capital. When I have, I have a scale of consciousness on the wall, when I do my, I'll give you my presentation so you can take it all. But I know I can make a change in the workshop if the people are at least at hope. Mm. Because if there's no hope, there's no engagement, there's no possibility. I've got to get them to hope and open that door a little bit and then I can transform the space. But without that hope and that potential optimism to say it could be better, and so we use appreciative inquiry and say, tell me about a time when you were part of a great team, when you were part of an organization, when you did feel good. And by using that process, we re-engage and re-energize re the thing. But resilience is a fundamental. IQ gets you on the field. EQ helps you to interact and manage work with people as you go higher up the leadership scale. And I don't care if, you've got, if you're genius and you've got a good heart. If you take a slap and you stay down, you're useless for me. Times are only getting tougher. Times are only getting more competitive. Mm. Do
do more with less, more pressure, more stress. The machines are coming into the workplace. Competition is growing. You know, people will, will take your business model and turn it upside down. People that are trying to sell stuff. Ah, you know, I've got my books and videos and CDs. The guys that are giving that stuff away. So now my business model is making money that way. I'm dead. And it can happen overnight. So the, the, it's VUCA, you know, this volatile, uncertain, chaotic, ambiguous space is there. Most people do not have the mental capacity to manage their finances, never mind be concerned with the bigger picture of the world. This is one of my most powerful assessments of mindset. Just, I just watched the eyes and the frowning and, and the comments like, yeah, I did, but now I've forgotten. And this is the reality. It's such a unique thing that you think people would remember it. We are run by habit. We are 90% unconscious. Most of our life is run by the internal system. I've got a video that shows that your unconscious makes seven seconds before you're aware of it. Before you consciously are know. They can do, put you in a scanner and they'll tell you before you decide what you're going to decide. To like a 97% accuracy. So that somebody once said, if, if your conscious brain is one centimeter, your conscious thinking cognitive capacity, in comparison, how big is your unconscious? About 12 kilometers. So you're like, a, you're like a flea on the back of an elephant. And that's the problem, is people are trying to teach the flea. I go to the elephant. Have a look at your neighbor's drawing quickly. Did you do it? You didn't do it. <laughs> Have a look at your neighbor's drawing. So inter interesting that you didn't even try. <laughs> so try. <laughs> look at your neighbor's drawing quickly. What do you notice? Just in the, in the interest of time, I want to cover everything for you. But here's what we do. Is everybody, there's an invisible constraint. And you stay in the lines, hey? Most people stay in the lines. I just see John there. The one that's the only one that's gone out of the line. Oh, I didn't see you, sorry. So, unless you get, unless you can step out of your thinking, your constraints, and you're aware of the constraints, you're never going to bring the solution. Because here's how we go. Let's show you. You have to go out of the box. But you've got, this elephant is holding you in the box. Stay in the lines. But unless you get out of the box in the future for innovation, for creativity, for problem solving, you're never going to be able to be in this new VUCA world. I guarantee you, 95% of your staff won't solve this. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need for the future. We know that humans have needs. Needs is like oxygen. You need food, clothing, shelter. But we need love and connection, belonging. We know Maslow's stuff. Mm -hmm. How much love and connection, belonging do you have in your workplace? We need certainty. Because that's a core fundamental for us. If you take away certainty, the brain, David Rock's work, the brain goes into panic and defense mode. But the moment you start to retrench people, that uncertainty gets smashed on both sides, the going and the staying. With the work, with the politics, with the danger, with the hijacking, people live in uncertainty constantly. We also want variety, because we get bored. And significance is the number one thing that we do stuff. While we go that extra mile, we, we want to be, you know, as kids we hang up on the, the jungle gym, hi dad, look at me, dad, look at me. Or we buy a lolly car, we buy flashy, you know, we, we do stuff to, to create significance. Most of it's positive, but very often it's negative. If I bring a gun to you, I'm, I'm significant in 10 seconds. So it's attainable, but it's not sustainable in the longer term. So some people will create havoc in their organization. They'll be the disengaged terrorists in your organization. They've got significance. They, they're your social leaders. Don't ignore them. Listen to them. Because by listening to them, you can use that energy and bring it back into the machine. The top two, growth and contribution. All the youngsters today, they want growth. They want meaning. They want the, the incremental process. How do you give them that growth? Now, Zappos had a process, you know Zappos, the, the little call center company that sells a billion dollars a year? Just ladies' shoes and stuff. They had, took three years to go to the first level of like, management. And they found it was too far away, so people just didn't, they gave up. And they've chunked that down into six-month steps. So the goal is close, 
and it's near. And you can get that win, you've got that drive, that pressure, that win. But if I say, if you succeed and you do your target, next year December will go away for a, for a reward, it's too far away. Brain can't think that far. If you know Elliot Jacques' work, cognitive complexity, capacity, you know, your gardener thinks for the end of the week. You know, as you go up, you need to think further and further and further. If you're the CEO level 7, you need to think 5 to 10 years. But you can't expect somebody whose timeline is only a month or two to, to mm. worry about a year. It's just, it's, give up. Meaning is so important and mastery. The moment you can do something that you love to do, it becomes part of your flow and you get meaning. Now you bring your best, now you can unleash that potential. Mm. And I'm blessed, I love what I do. I do it free, I did hospice free the other day. How many of your people love what they do? How many people love coming to work? But we need the challenge and we need that growth, because that's what that challenge is where you grow. Mm. Yeah. Can I say something about that previous slide? Yes. That maybe people should think, and I've seen this graffiti somewhere in Joburg, that love is the bottom line, as opposed to profit. Nothing else matters. Profit is oxygen, love is the real value. Now, I do a lot of work in the near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. When you die, you go down a tunnel, you meet your avatar, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, whoever your avatar is. Question number one. How much wisdom did you gain while you were on the planet? Question number two. How much love did you bring? Question number three. Are you ready to receive back what you perpetrated on others? Not as a punishment. Wake you up. Become conscious. All that matters is love. And I use it in my talks. I use it in my workshops. And I see that I see the guys like. What's that? You love your work. You love coming to work. You love being with the people with you are. You know what's going to happen for you to be courageous enough to, to bring love. But today we need high performance. You know, when, if you look at the technology that these guys are now doing, I, I watched a video. I mean, this little thing here is designed to, to push the airflow. The technology we have today. The, the cold technology is incredible. But what technology are we using for humans? Mm -hmm. I've been doing human performance technology for 30 years. Now, I, I can clear baggage. We have a meridian emotion ethics tapping process. A phobia can be put in in 10 seconds, 5 seconds. I'm now down to a point where it probably takes me 10 minutes I can get it out. But people have been in therapy for 20 years, PTSD, and they can't clear them with normal psychotherapy, talk, talk and couch therapy. You know, that literally, two sessions of two hours with, with EFT, uh, clear. Mm. Why are we using that? I teach people in my workshop to do the tapping. Mm. Fundamentally, here's your job. is A person joins your company, they get up to speed on onboarding, they deliver value, and then they leave. Mm. What's the research today? The new generation, within a year and a half, they're planning to leave. All the new kids are planning to leave. What does it cost to replace, to onboard, to advertise? Or it's huge costs. If you can get them up to speed faster, get a better value out of them, and get them to stay longer, in a sales environment alone, just with a 20% increase in performance each year, and they stay one year longer, that's 250% better value out of that resource in your organization. At the end of the day, this is your job, is to, to bring in a resource, and a, a person, get them to perform to their best. Because here's my thing, when they're bringing more value, you've got more value to give to them. If a company is running on Jackson Brown, running on empty, very hard to, to say I want, I want a, an increase. So here's my framework. It's based on X. 30 years of research, uh, Professor André Duval at the High Performance Center in Holland. There are five or six areas specifically that are proven to impact the bottom line. So this is academically validated. I call it Clear X. Culture, context, leadership, your engagement and energy, your appreciative positive action, the right mindsets, relationships and resilience, and the execution where the rubber meets the road, your, your, your actual day-to-day -day stuff that goes there. 40, 45 years of research, over 10 million bucks to put together to bring that and make that a great place to work. Positive, psychologically safe, bring out your breast, expand your potential. But you have to do all of it together. You can't just do one at a time. It needs to, it's, got to be, it's like a wheel. You've got to balance all of the spokes, not just one of the spokes. 
So if you give me your details, I've got an hour's overview on this process. What does HPO stand for? High Performance Organization. Sorry. Okay. So culture we know impacts performance between 20 and 35%, just the culture alone. Leadership between 40 and 60%, financial performance. Now put those two together, good culture, good leadership, exponential. Bad culture, bad leadership, destructive. We know engagement, all of the Gallup research, we know what it does, it brings huge value. But most managers can't do zip with it. When we're spending billions on engagement, and it moves the needle one, 1% and they're like, yay! I use appreciative inquiry because it's safe, it's positive, it's inclusive, it creates a psychologically safe environment. You bring out the best of your people as that process. And creating an organization that embraces that can unleash incredible value and potential. If you've got the right mindset, and I think I've got the qualities here, but as an individual, you can be up to seven times more valuable. If you're a leader, you can be up to 8.4 times more valuable. All of Professor Stoltz's research. Every one of these is a multiplier. And you multiply two by two by two by two, you get incredible impact and results. And then execution, accountability, empowerment, right mindsets, on the road, together, collaboration, communication, high levels of trust. You then get a machine that can outperform and be competitive and sustainable. So think about it quickly. What's one thing that you could do differently in your workplace tomorrow to improve the potential to bring and start to create a higher performance workplace? Write one word down, a phrase down. That's one thing that you can be conscious and intentionally do differently to start to, to get that compounding, you know, 10 to the power of two is a hundred, ten to the power of three is a thousand, ten to the power of six is a million. So imagine you can do ten times ten times ten. So, and most people only do one, they're like send the staff on training. The training's got less than ten percent efficacy. You need to do other things, add coaching to that model, to re-engineer the inside of the people. My challenge is I have 45 years of research, I'm trying to give you in an hour. <laughs> Mindset, Professor Dweck, Carol Dweck. Mindset matters. Mm. If you've got kids, mm. have you ever said to them, you're such a clever person? Mm. Now the problem is, the moment they're not clever, they feel invalidated, they're scared, they will lie, steal, crook and cheat to be seen as clever again. Mm. Even your staff are like that. So you need to make sure that you give them appreciation for, I love your creativity, I love your resilience, I love your effort, I love your commitment. You, know, you need to validate what you want more of in the behavior, in how they show up, versus you're such a clever person. You get kids, low, uh, fixed mindset kids, you give them a puzzle, and you say, okay, well done, do you want to do another one? Do you want a harder one or the same? No, I want the same. Because they're scared of not being seen as good enough. Mm -hmm. The growth mindset kids say, now give me harder, I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to discover. You've got to do that for a start. The world, we cannot be stuck in the past. And so mindset is a constraint in everything. It is the absolute fundamental spark of greatness. There's all this information in the world with the internet. I can find anything free. I mean, I, I get it free. But if you don't have a mindset that says, let's turn this, let's use it, let's expand it, let's grow it, let's apply that. People know what to do. They don't do what they know because they don't feel like it. State is the, underman, the, the fundamental underlying process of how you're going to take action. These are the top 20 mindset qualities. How do you measure these in your workplace? Which of these priority for you? But I'll give it to you in the presentation. You can get the presentation. See, most people want results, which means you need different actions, so you send them on a workshop. The problem is, send a bad attitude person on a workshop, they're a prisoner, they come back within 30 days, 90% is forgotten and not applied. And habit drives. If you change them here, of who I am, my identity, of this is who I am, everything changes. But by an exponential factor. But you have to change at the deepest level. The workshop's not going to do it, not going to cut it anymore. Mm. In the world today, whether it's air, oxygen, water, money, time, there are always constraints. Mm. Not only did it worse. 
The challenge is we have to teach our people to be resourceful. You have to take the decision making, the delegation down to the front line. They have to be able to, they have to, be, able to be confident enough to be able to think and plan and interact and handle pressure. You know? Call centers are very hot kitchens. And these people are at like 97% pressure. You've got to be mm -hmm. on. Yes. And they put the, the, the weakest people there because it's like a churnable thing. Put the right people, build the right resilience, the right mindset, the right of who I am. Now you've got, you've got light gladiators that, that, that they, they want, they say, bring it to me. Come, I'll take the hot, I'll take the hot kitchen. I'll take the hot customer. There's nothing wrong with stress. But to the level you stress, you need to de-stress. So are your people ready for the future? Are you future fit with all that stuff that's coming in? The, the future's already here. It's just not evenly spread around. So what are you going to do to build resilient, positive, proactive, collaborative, connected, communicating, loving people? It can't just be a cognitive thing. It can't be a learn. That's why I, I, I put my little flag up as team building and optimization, but I do so also. I reach out, change deeply on the inside. You need to be able to response. And I, I changed, I built the word, response agility. Stuff's happening right in front of you now. You, the decision making's got to be at the front line. You can't have a person that's following command and control. Stuff's changing, it's changing too fast. The complexity is too much. And the lines from where the boss is down to where decision must happen, the that time span now is very, very short. Now I go online, I'm looking to buy something. First of all, I'm online. You don't even know I'm looking to buy. You may not even have the chance at my business. But when, but when I want something, I send an email. I want a response now. I'm not going to wait three days. Mm -hmm. I, I, I sent a thing to the guy. I got, I got a call two days later. I said, guys, sorry, you sold that. I made the decision in an hour. You two days. You're out. And at the end of the day, it's for the big green mm -hmm. buck. I'm saying, people, planet, profit. That three has got to be together. Have to. We can change where people work in the environment that they work in. But that's the least effective. Mm -hmm. We can change some of that. But that's also not as effective. And we send them on, we spend billions on training. And it's got some effect, but such a little. Now you start to change. Now you start to get, why am I here? What am I doing? Who am I? Are you a human being having a spiritual experience or are you a spiritual being having a human experience? How do you show up? Do you bring love and peace and light and joy, togetherness? Are you a builder or are you a breaker? You know, most fools break and they're unconscious that they are. Do you bring love? Do you bring light? Do you bring peace? Do you bring joy? Because for me, my picture of you, I'm in front of a part of God. Every one of you is, oh, yes. is a part of God, and that's how I, I, I show up and dance. What's one thing you can do to bring more consciousness, more awareness to your workplace, to yourself and to your workplace? How do you unleash that, the deepest part of the passion of a person? How do you make it safe enough? You know, you were saying about some guy coming to your office, I think it was you mentioned some depressed guy coming to your office. Mm -hmm. People are doing the best they can with what they've got. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to take them by the nose, take them to the water, and put them in the water. Well, who was that? Gilliman? She said, come to the edge. And I said, no, we're scared. She said, come to the edge. I said, no, we're scared. She said, come to the edge. And they did, and she pushed them, and they flew. Most people are too scared to fly. Mm -hmm. Because they're living in their past, they're too scared of the future. Any place you have the power is right now. This is where your power is, right now. Are you running old programs, old belief systems, old values, old fears, old worries, old baggage? It's gone! Unless you want to recreate it and allow you to recreate it. And they're doing the best they can with what they've got. Depression person, send them to NLP, hypnotherapy. Do some tapping. Because most of it is cognitive, not, emo not chemical. There are some people that have chemical therapy, you've got to have tablets, I've been around a few of those. Most of it's loss, anger. Because we've lost, we've lost certainty, we've lost hope, we've lost vision, we've lost connection. Work, work, work is hell. So you have a choice. What are you going to do when you go back to your workplace? You come to this wonderful workshop, 
Are you going to be a beacon of light and put down your anchor and be a provocative force in your organization? Or are going to fall back into the lines? Back into the lines of conformity. I'm busy setting up a sales training with one of my, my guys that I'm mentoring. And there's all the new research now that says, you know, you used to be a, a, sale, a relationship salesman or a solution salesman. The guys that are thriving today are what they call challenges. They're walking into the boardroom and to the people and they're challenging with their perception. But they have to know their products and their services. They have to know the businesses, the client's business and their context. So you have to be an expert. But they're not just saying, tell me what you want and I'll get it for you. They're saying, excuse me, I think you'll do better with this. So there's this, this challenging process. And that's what I'm saying. My whole revolutionary workplace is to challenge the workplace, people, planet, and profit. But if you don't get to the heart of the matter, to the beingness, the money doesn't matter. I don't care how much money you've got. When you die, you don't take it with you. God doesn't look at you and say, well done, you made three billion. <laughs> Can I say, how much love did you bring? How much wisdom did you gain? And you're ready to receive back what you perpetrated on others. So I have lots of resources. I have books and audios <coughs> that I make available for my people. I have taken my life's work and put it together so that it's outside of me. And that's why I built Life Masters. It's like Toastmasters, but where you come to, to live life. And so for the final last time, please stand up. Who knows Amy Cuddy? Wow. Who knows Tape Talks? Yes. Go look up Amy Cuddy. She talks about changing your physiology, changes your state. And for her one is, is the, one, the Wonder Woman stands like this. Mm -hmm. If you stand like this, you start to create a different energy in your system. A-M-Y-C-U-D-E-Y. -E so, 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 like ladies, this is kind of your, your superwoman ready to fly. Mm -hmm. And if you're brave enough, this is your superman. Mm -hmm. su superman. <laughs> 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 Just like this. For two minutes, this is, this is where you get to feel really, really good. So you can choose which one. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Get a picture of you. Get a picture of you right now today, where you are right now. Scan your body, how you're feeling. Arms down for the moment. Just scan down how you're feeling. Relax. Breathe through your system. Become conscious. Become aware of the feeling in your system, where your thinking is going. And just step into the future, however far in month, week, a year, whatever, and get a picture of you at your best, your fullest potential, your absolute, happy, healthy, resilient, robust, laughing, powerful space. Get a picture of that. And put your hands on your hips as you do that. Stand with that hips and build that down. Take that picture, make the sounds bigger, make them louder, make the picture brighter. Step into your picture so that you're looking through your own eyes, what we call associated. Look into that and then take that feeling and expand it. 10 exit. You're the Steven Spielberg of your life and feel freaking fantastic. And take that feeling and make it even better. When you're ready, put up your hands into that, your Superman in your head and say inside, say what you're going to say. Yes, yes, powerful, loving, awesome, wonderful, amazing, outstanding. And pull it into like a crescendo. Da -da -da -da. I'm amazing. I'm incredible. I'm using my full, full potential. I'm awesome. I'm unstoppable. I am is the word. Inside, say I am. Three or four things that are positive. I'm strong. I'm resilient. I'm kind. I'm loving. I'm caring. I'm passionate. I'm powerful. I'm wise. I'm absolutely freaking awesome. And one more time. Open your eyes. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. We have four minutes. So, you can invite me to come and we'll, we'll do a process. I, I've had guys, in fact, look on the back of your card. Go and do this when you, when you go back to your company. Um, sorry, your name is again? Emma. Emma, come in. I'll show you how I'll do it with Emma. So, I don't know something, but I'll use something in my head. This is the process. In a 20 people team building, you're going to do it 19 times to your people. So I know what's on here, so I don't have to. But you don't need it. Okay. I'm just going to do it one way. So choose a person you're going to do, that you're going to do the rave with. Choose them. Touch them appropriately. So we'll always have a joke, touch them appropriately. Appropriately. <laughs> 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 look, look them in the eyes, because the eyes are the windows to there. Look them in the eyes for 10 seconds. Oh, it's long. 
Because you're going beyond the ego, the job, the role, function, position. Emma, I respect, appreciate, value, and embrace you for the time and effort that you've taken to dress up so smartly today. Thank you. And all she can do is say, thank you. And then you give them the card because they get 20 cards at a time. Go and do this with your people at work. There's every workshop. There's wow. tears. There's opening the relationship. The heart opens. I did it in thank you. Great to see. I did it in Zambia with a, an accountant who was running the, the, the telecoms team. They import phones. The black dude and his wife. She was hard as nails accountant. He was the entrepreneur. So I said, do you want to build this machine or do you want to break it? Just, no, no, do you want to build it? At the very end, we did this process. We had 35 of these managers there, and then we do a closing circle. So, you know, how are you feeling? What did you get? How will that impact your future? And he said, I want the rest of my 200 people to do this. I haven't felt so good in my life. And 35 people come and tell you what they think and like about you. Something specific, something unique, something personal. He builds a machine completely. He builds the trust, he builds the relationship. But you have to have cleared the baggage and the conflict and the racism and all of this stuff before that. You, otherwise, you, you've got a cold heart doing it. Mm -hmm. But my power is I create complete shift in consciousness. If you read David Hawkins' Power versus Force, then their scale is 0 to 1,000 on the, on the scale. Average person will move 5 points in a lifetime. If you learn about it, you'll move 15 to 20. My goal is to move you 100 in a week. I'm, I'm an alchemist. That's my tale, my power and bad. Bless you guys. Thank you. And thank you, sir, for the opportunity to come and present today. So if you'll send me an email, take my card, I'll send you an audio, a download of ours audio. I've got tons and tons of stuff I'll gladly give. I'm here to change humanity. I have no children. Humanity is my children. So I'd love to find ways to work with you and collaborate with you. I'm very easy to work with. The answer is yes. <laughs> as long as it's fair win win and we change the world, Martin says yes. Thank you. If you guys could do me a favor and, and maybe go to Facebook and connect with me on Facebook or LinkedIn okay. and just give me a little test. I just believe you can catch more bees with honey than with vinegar. You've got to create a safe space where you can, people can explore new possibilities. The moment you point a finger, I'm going to defend mode. You take my, my certainty, my significance, my connection, my belonging. Phone me, I'll come and do a talk for you guys. We'll give you some ideas.